Good day. Welcome. Week eight, day two of our 50 days of freedom. Our treasure text today is let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. For he breaks down gates of bronze and cuts through bars of iron. I want to begin um, with asking a question. Because this week, we are dealing with God's unfailing, unfailing love. I want to ask this question. Why is it? Why do you think it's hard for us to believe in God's unconditional, unfailing love uh, for us? Why do you think that is? I want to go to um, our text uh, today from Psalm 107. Psalm 107, and I'm going to read the first three verses and then verses 10 23, 10 to 22, excuse me, Psalm 107, the first three verses, then verses 10 to 22, and then we're going to jump in and explicate, explicate that as well. It says, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say this, those he redeemed from the hand of the foe, those he gathered from the lands from east and west, from north and the south. Then check out verse 10. Oh boy, here we go. It says here, some sat in darkness and the deepest gloom, prisoners suffering in iron chains, for they had rebelled against the words of God and despised the counsel of the Most High. So he subjected them to bitter labor, they stumbled and there was no one to help. And they cried to the Lord in their trouble. And he saved them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness and the deepest gloom and broke away their chains. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. For he breaks down gates of bronze and cuts through the bars of iron. Some became fools to their rebellious ways and suffered afflictions because of their iniquities. They loathed all food and drew near the gates of death. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. From their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them. He rescued them from the grave. Why did some sit in darkness and the deepest gloom as prisoners suffering in iron chains? Yes, yeah, because of their sins, right? And who subjected them to bitter labor? Was it Satan, foreign rulers, religious leaders, or was it God? Why do you imagine when you read verse 13, when you read verse 13, why do you imagine God would subject his people, his own people to bitter labor for rebelling against his words. Based on base, verses 13 and 14, I, you have to have your Bible to answer these questions. Based, based on verses 13 and 14, what did God do once his people cried out to him in their trouble? Yes. What was God's obvious motivation, motivation for doing such wonderful deeds? Verses 15 and 16. Why should the rebellious who have been free be faithful to tell his works? Why should they? What an appropriate psalm for our study. You see, our hearts will never be healthy unless we learn to accept and abide in God's unfailing love. I want to draw two points from the psalm to encourage us toward our goal. Number one, God's unfailing love extends to the most rebellious captives and most afflicted souls. You see, Psalm 107 is refreshingly clear. God's unfailing love motivates wonderful deeds for the worst of men and women who cry out in their troubles. The Hebrew word used uh, for wonderful deeds is pala, meaning extraordinary, miraculous, marvelous, and astonishing. These kinds of adjectives seem like they would be limited to God's children, 
don't they? Yet God's word tells us that he does he does extraordinary, miraculous, marvelous, astonishing things for the worst of the worst who cry to him. Why? Because he loves them with unfailing love. One work I'm convinced God wants to accomplish in, his, in, in this study is broadening our spiritual vision of his love. We don't only see God's unfailing love through broken chains. We don't only see God's unfailing love through broken chains and healed afflictions. His unfailing love also appears in his unwillingness to allow rebellion to go unnoticed and undisciplined. I see at least four ways God dealt with the rebellers so that they would cry out to him. First, he allowed them to sit in darkness. We see that and gloom in verse 10. Rebellion can lead to literal prisons. It can just as easily lead to emotional cells of darkness and gloom. Certainly not only depression is a result of rebellion, but it can lead to rebellion. I think depression is especially likely if the rebel was formally close to God. Look at the word despised in verse 11. The original word is na'at, which is to disdain. It's, it's the idea of disdain for one who formerly received favorable attention and then rebelled. I am thankful that God allows darkness to follow rebellion, or who could say how long we would remain in rebellion? I thank God that sometimes he uses darkness to lead us to the light. Secondly, he subjected them to bitter labor. Rebellion can begin with fun and games, but eventually it leads to hard work. Thirdly, he allowed them to stumble in verse 12. No doubt each of us can think of a few ways God allows the rebellious to stumble. And you can cite an example um, even from our, from your teenage years, my teenage years or whatever, but, but God uses that. Fourthly, he allowed, he allowed no one to help, verse 12. How I thank God for his unfailing love to make us sure others failed in their attempts to help me. Sound strange? Psalm 62, verses 1 and 2 and 5 to 7. He wants you to read that. Do you think we should ever acknowledge God as God alone if we didn't experience crisis when no one else could help us? I want you to think of the time when you would stumble and no one could help you. Did this lead you to God for a deeper, for, uh, for a God? I hope it did. Or did you go in a deeper darkness and gloom? Fifthly, he allowed some, some to suffer affliction in verse 17. What physical symptoms did the affliction take according to verse 18? Once again, certainly not all physical affliction is caused by rebellion, but rebellion can result in physical affliction. I can think of a time when I rebelled against God and, I, and, 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 and there was affliction, physical affliction that came along with it. And I thank God that it pulled me towards him. You see, God loves us enough to ultimately make us miserable in our rebellion. I want somebody to thank God, praise God for that right now in this place. The second point that I want to draw from Psalm 107 is God strives with his captive children until they are free. You see, the, the worst possible result of our disobedience would be God giving up on us. And the last thing, hallelujah, that I want God to do is give up on me. But I, I want to thank the Lord that he strives with his children. One of the most common occurrences that happens uh, to prisoners uh, when they're actually incarcerated is uh, divorce. They go into prison and um, their spouse files for divorce. It's a common occurrence. However, um, God is not like that. Uh, when we go into our prisons, God is not filing for a divorce. You see, the best of our churches tend to welcome those captive to um, alcohol, drugs, promiscuity, and so forth. 
at first. But if they don't, you know, uh, fix themselves up pretty quickly, they will probably be soon despised. We like success stories, powerful testimonies. A captive in our midst soon wears out his or her welcome if they don't get it together pretty quickly. In gracious contrast, God stands by us until we are free. He uses various forms to, of discomfort to woo us, to cry out to him, but he never forsakes us. God is the only one who is not repelled by the depth and the length of our needs. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. We can say hallelujah today to that. You see, no matter how long any of us have struggled, God is not giving up on us. Even if we are drained, all of our human, all of our human resources around us dry, He is our inexhaustible source. He is our inexhaustible resources. He is our well of living water. Let us give thanks. Psalm 107, verses 21 and 22. Get this. Let us give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. Let them sacrifice, thank offerings, and tell of his works with songs and joy. Psalm 107, 21 and 20. Beloved, if he has become God alone to you, you have a powerful story to tell. Start talking. God bless you.